some trial and error. And I mean, you have to, I think as being a business owner, you have to kind of swallow your pride because there's going to be things that you may think will be great ideas and Mm -hmm. they're not, or things that you're like, well, I guess we'll see. And far exceed your expectations you know yeah i mean i had to be convinced to start a podcast at one point right yeah yeah <laughs> i mean and so i think you have to take a leap of faith on it. hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the tf cast i'm your host willis stout and this is your favorite local uh mankato arts and culture podcast Hey, we got Grum at the table today. It is December 14th, and we are in the solarium. And I am your host, Jacob Bases, and I am so pleased to introduce Jenny, uh, the owner of the Circle Inn in Lower North Mankato, here to talk about first the Circle, what's going on there, and then all of your other business ventures. Uh, Jenny, if you could introduce yourself to the audience and um, just tell us how you got involved with the Circle Inn to begin with and what's going on down there. Okay, I'm Jenny Bob Holtz. Um, yeah, and I worked at the Circle Inn for 10 years um, and then bought it from Tom and John Bohr um, in January of 2019. And ever since, we all know it's been quite the roller coaster. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the Circle Inn has been around actually since pre prohibition. Um, it used to be where the river is now. So when they um, rerouted the river for the highway, uh, they ended up tearing down the original and then it was built um, where it currently is in Lower North in uh, the mid 1950s. So kind of a lot of history with um, the bar itself, the Circle Inn, and then it's been in Lower North for quite a long time as well. So, mm. And how long did it have the previous owners for? Um, so their dad and uncle started it. And then they bought it from them um, in the 80s. Um, and then I purchased it from them. So, yeah, they were de- they were like 30 some years in or I don't know, because they had worked there, too, prior to owning it. So, yeah, they had been in their family for a very long time. Sure. And they were just yeah. they were just ready to. Yeah. So there was kind of um, a lot of, you know, they were ready to be done. They were getting to that age, you know, in their 60s. Um, And I had been there for a really long time, five years of being the manager. And I have currently now an 11 year old. So, you know, um, we're at almost four years in now. So it was getting to the point that I was, you know, working, closing bartending shifts and still the one that's getting her to school. And so it was just getting a lot. Um, and so they knew that I was interested and we kind of, after a couple of years, finally it was like, okay, is this going to happen or not? Um, so Timing, you know, looking back, maybe it could be looked at as not great timing in 2019, but I also kind of think that it worked out for the better because now I have a lot of (laughs) situations under my belt, if you will. And I don't know if they would have handled going into 2020 um, the same that I did. I think I think the circle probably would have shut down had they continued owning it through that point. So I think it in the long run worked out kind of how it was supposed to. Sure. Um, Yeah. And what. Like since your uh, since your ownership of the circle, mm-hmm. what what has your um, objective with it been? Have you just kind of I I, I didn't actually really patronize the place before yep. you were there, so yep. I have no frame of reference. Like, yeah. what changes have you implemented, or are you just so on? definitely um, like when I started managing is when we we always kind of had some random live music here and there, um, but nothing that was truly bringing people in, um, if that makes sense. And so when I became manager, two of the bands that I brought in was the Murphy brothers, um, and the rain Kings. And so, you know, when we would get, you know, after say a hockey game on a Friday or Saturday night, you know, people are coming in at eight o'clock and we would have just kind of this, you know, very, I called it elevator, elevator music. Um, and people were there to have fun and it was just kind of like, and we'd lose people. And so I was like, we need to have these fun bands, you know, and we were starting to get kind of this niche, you know, my group of friends was, you know, coming around and they were in their, you know, mid to late, you know, twenties going into the thirties when I was starting there. And then we had a bunch of bartenders who their friends were coming in. So we were getting kind of this younger crowd from what it had previously been. So starting to kind of cater to that, um, I guess is something that I started implementing when I was managing and then now with owning. Um, and yeah, kind of 
bringing in different stuff. You know, it's always been like a working class bar. Um, and it definitely had this niche of, you know, like city workers and, you know, Tom and John's friends, you know, but they were also getting older as well as they were. And so they're not, you know, maybe going out as much as they used to. Um, and so just bringing in fun things that's kind of for that working class bar, like the meat raffles and kind of giving it, you know, it's a bit of a dive bar and embracing that. Um, and having like these potlucks and, you know, being able to rent out the back room and do st different stuff back there. Um, and bringing in like these music, you know, options where it's more of acoustic or having it out on the patio, um, during the weekdays as well, not just the weekends. So, um, that's definitely helped to bring in different niches of people that it's not kind of just, you know, one generation, if you will. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, that's how I heard about the bar mm -hmm. actually was, uh, Laura told me like, Hey, the circle Inn has a new owner. She's really awesome. She's really trying to book local bands mm -hmm. and uh, she pays well. And so that, that's really how I heard about you was like, I, I know for a fact that the, the local music scene really appreciates you and your bar a lot. And I, I've yeah. played there as well. And yeah. it was a great experience. We were real well taken care of. And, uh, the patio is awesome for playing on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then, uh, just like Jacob, I had actually never, ever been there before. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had Mr. Bacula on the podcast mm -hmm. and, uh, he basically made me really want to do comedy. Mm -hmm. And then Jake was like, well, if Grum can do it, I can do it. And, uh, it's like literally one of, I, I, I guess I don't want to speak for Jake, but it's one of my favorite places now. And yeah, I think that that's really cool. Um, uh, what was it? Gonna, uh, it, just to segue into that a little bit, uh, did Dan work there before? And then also like, uh, when he was originally pitching comedy, like kind of what your thoughts on it were and what they are now? Yeah. So I do want to kind of go back to the music part yeah. because one of the things is that we really previously kind of only did that classic rock niche. Mm. Um, and we really started branching out into a lot of these other bands and it's just, um, Nate Boots was one of the main ones of kind of bringing in not to say a different genre, but I mean, cause he still will do, you know, Tom Petty and those kinds of things. But at the time it was porch lights. Um, and mm. so they had all their own, you know, original music. Um, and then just, you know, I mean, for a while there, they were, you know, banging on, you know, it was literally a can with rocks in it with a shovel and just, you know, people were like, what is this? Like, mm. it's just, it was really cool. And then just finding out these other bands, you know, um, and getting them in. And it's not just, it's, you know, some original music. And then you've got like just a lot of other more like soulful, you know, we've had in some like blues bands. Um, and so it's just been fun. And there's so many amazing musicians in this town. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy, actually. Um, and I love to, you know, that was the thing with like then the Rain Kings and the Murphy Brothers. And they would have, you know, some of these other artists then play with them. And then yeah. people just loved that, you know oh, okay, this person can play, you know, and they're playing in multiple different bands. And um, that's just been really fun to watch too. And so then, you know, when there's certain bands booked and then all of a sudden like, ooh, also, you know, guest starring, you know, so-and-so. Yeah. And so people are really um, loving that. So that's been awesome. But yes, with Dan, so. This episode is brought to you by the team at Triple Falls. Triple Falls is an independent media and production company and uh, you can hire us for a project. Just reach out to us at info at triplefalls.org uh, to find out more and let us know what you're thinking. Your support makes these types of productions possible. Now back to the show. And so people are really um, loving that. So that's been awesome. But yes, with Dan, so this whole thing with Dan was really kind of crazy how it all <laughs> panned out, to be honest yeah. with you. So Joe Tugas, his father-in-law, um, we would have, you know, him playing in various forms um, of bands down at the circle. And he was telling me about, and Wendy um, graduated around the time of my brother, but I didn't like know her very well, you yeah. know, growing up. We love Wendy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and she's younger than me. And so I just hadn't really known her previously very well. Um, but Joe was just telling me like, hey, you know, my daughter and son-in-law are moving back and he's looking for a bartending job. He, you know, is bartending out in Wisconsin right now. And I had never 
spoken to Dan. Like we never really talked. We um, talked one time on the phone and he had mentioned that he wanted to send his resume and all these things. And if now knowing Dan, I just find the whole, <laughs> the whole um, <laughs> process of this hilarious because he was taking it very, very seriously. Mm. For this bartending job. And, you know, he's like, I've got, a, you know, a lot of things that I can bring to the table. And I was like, okay, well, are you, you know, just wanting to bartender? I'm very confused. And so he was, they were moving back um, right around Blues on Belgrade. And I was like, well, we could get you in then, you know. Um, but it's also kind of a crazy time to just be thrown into, you know, bartending or whatever. And so then him and I ended up sitting down and talking. And he still, you know, he was wanting this like nights and weekends bartending gig. And, you know, the place that he had been at, it's from what I gathered, it's been a very just, you know, chill, kind of laid back, very much like our Tuesday nights at the bar mm. type of a thing. And getting to know him more and more, I was like, you know, I don't think that the fast paced Saturday night of the Circle Inn is maybe, you know, what you want. Plus, he was telling me how Wendy was going to be going to school. And then they have two young kids. So I was like, so you're going to be gone a bunch and your wife's trying to do schooling. Like it kind of just sounds maybe not like the best fit bartending every single night wise. And then he kind of brought up this comedy thing. And so I was like, okay, well that, you know, could work. And actually we were sitting down in the back room talking about this mm -hmm. and I could see the wheels turning, you know? And so, um, so anyways, so we're sitting there talking and I'm like, okay, well, I'm really struggling during the mornings with trying to, you know, be there for these reps and these deliveries and whatever else and getting all the cleaning done. Like if I could have somebody that could do that and then we could still get you some bartending shifts. Plus you could do this comedy thing. And he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, that would actually be <laughs> ideal all around. Um, and so yeah, he did a few shifts and kind of like, uh, you know, training and whatnot. And I kind of started showing him, you know, the opening stuff. And then we got like, you know, his feet wet on all that. And then he's like, OK, so this comedy thing. And I was like, sure. I mean, but it needs to be your thing. Like, I can't, you know, put another thing, yeah. you know, that I'm trying to coordinate together or whatever. And he's like, all right, well, if you'll allow it, like I know some people, you know, that would come from the cities and possibly from Wisconsin. And um, he had said that there is kind of a, a group in town that he thinks, you know, could really hop on board with this. And so it's like, all right, you know, and the first, I mean, he was so nervous, I think, about like presenting the idea to me. Yeah. Um, and I was like, no, I mean, we'll give it a a shot like you know i mean we've done many things that have failed or yeah. not worked or whatever it's like you gotta kind of you know try it out and and i kept telling him too i was like if it's not you know out of the gates like amazing let's give it like six weeks or something you know yeah, you can't yeah, just yeah. because even that first one i remember being like well you know I, there, I forget the weather was something i can't remember it was maybe rainy or not the greatest out and i was like that doesn't mean that this isn't going to be a success like mm -hmm. you know um and just kind of learn different ways of marketing it and getting the word out and um yeah and so it's just been really really awesome it's been a year now and seeing how it's evolved and what he's done with the back room i think is just amazing the transformation that he yeah. does every single sunday yeah the first you know? time i went in and it wasn't like that it like right. was weird i <laughs> yes. was like there's pool tables right. and like all this stuff what's <laughs> going on i know so yeah. And I mean, we have the space, so it might as well be utilized, mm. you know, for something. And Sunday nights prior. So when I was working, Sundays were always my shift. Um, and, you know, we used to close at seven o'clock on Sunday mm. nights. And so I said, you know, we'll stay open till 10 if, you know, to make this, you know, work because it doesn't make sense. And he was saying, too, to have comedy at the same time as, say, a football game or mm, whatever, because yeah. we are still that kind of a bar that, yeah. you know brings in people for that. Um, but yeah, I think it's really kind of worked out well and in a weird way, kind of been like a service industry night out type thing. Mm. Um, that, you know, that Sunday fun day crowd and, uh, the ones that, yeah, just like a fun eclectic crowd that, 
maybe isn't having to, um, you know, be to work at seven, yeah. eight in the morning on a Monday type of a thing. So. I didn't expect to have such a strong, uh, non-performer reaction from, mm -hmm. uh, when, when I first, the first one we went to, I would say almost everyone in the room performed, mm -hmm. but nowadays it's like 10 to one in mm -hmm. people watching and people performing. And I just think that's really cool because it clearly shows that number one, it's entertaining. People look forward to mm -hmm. it. And now that I think about it, you're right. It's a lot of civ service industry mm -hmm. people in the room, including me and Jake. Yep. Uh, yeah. And I, I just love it. I, Dan coming on the podcast is like one of the best things that's happened to me personally, just because now I have that awesome thing to do and we met yeah. and yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really awesome event. Yeah. And it's definitely, yes, it's brought in, you know, I mean, it's an eclectic variety of people in yeah. that back room, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, it is all walks of life and I love to, and I've said to Dan, I love how you can have very clean comedy. You can have some that's, I mean, there's a cross dresser. I mean, just like yeah. so <laughs> many different and everyone's laughing at the same stuff yeah like yeah. and it's just mm -hmm. i think it's a very unique i don't know he's done something that is like kind yeah. of our own little niche there and i can't truly take credit for any of it i mean he has just really done something special with yeah. it so totally yeah. agree i would i would be a, in this in that specific case of saying you couldn't take credit for it there's one thing that i think you should take credit for mm -hmm. and is worth mentioning in this case where when we first started talking about this, you said, we're going to give it some time to breathe and mm -hmm. like try different marketing strategies and stuff like right. this. And like, I can, I have watched a lot of ideas that I think are really solid kind of fall flat with people who expect the, the first run oh, to yeah. be the absolute, you know, kind of what they see the end vision being. Yeah. And it isn't dip like when you start to get into the like entertainment and production business as we mm -hmm. are, we, we walk into a room and we're like, what could it be? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's difficult to convince people mm -hmm. like, Hey, like you need to build a bar with like, you need to invest in another culture, but it's mm -hmm. very palpable. Like we have a similar situation down at the wine cafe mm -hmm. where there's a big music crowd who is almost aging out, you know, they probably yes. got 10 more years mm -hmm. and it, they're trying to do a similar thing where they yep. are attempting to connect with younger people yep. and, and build that. And it's a lot of work and trial and error. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I wouldn't sell yourself short at all on the, you know, reinventing the culture around your bar and having right. the space to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that said, have you had any similar experiences with, um, other kinds of entertainment, um, where, you know, either something did or didn't work out or like some kind of branding change yeah. ended up being, um, successful. And could you tell yeah. us about that? Absolutely. You know, we've had, and I don't want to name any, but we, you know, we've, we've brought in some artists that like people loved out the gate and then, you know, would get them in and people just didn't, um, or maybe they changed their ways on some stuff. Um, I mean, we, you know, we started doing, so when football's done, so with our Sundays, um, we actually close Sundays, May through the end of August, just because with us being just fully a liquor, you know, bar, bar, um, once it gets nice out, we're just not seeing that foot traffic. And so, um, plus it's kind of a day just for the staff, like do your thing, you know, type mm -hmm. of a thing. But, um, so once football's done, in between, you know, February and the end of April, we started doing, um, bingo and we're doing it where we're not encouraging people to bring their kids by any means, you know? So it was a very touchy way of explaining this is, uh, you know, adults, like we want people to be like 69, yeah, you know, whatever, like a Sunday fun day thing. And at first, people were bringing in their kids or it was like, people didn't, you know, get it. Some of the regulars, they'd walk in and it was like, oh, bingo, you know, but we're like, well, we need to, we need the sales. Like we need to bring people in. And so for a while there, we were like, is bingo going to work here? You know? And we were like, okay, let's just keep kind of like marketing it, have fun things. And now it's like a huge success for that. Also, I think because it's a short little few week time span, 
where, you know, people are having fun. They're going a little cabin fever crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so it helps there, but I mean, our meat raffle too, you would think, I mean, with kind of the, you know, people that we've got on a Thursday night when that first started, it was like kind of hit or miss. And we're like, is this going to work or not? And then just kind of making it a weekly thing and, um, continuing to promote it and whatnot. And now it's people come down specifically for that. But yeah, we played one of your meat raffles and people were going yeah. nuts for yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then adding music in with it, it's fun yeah. too, you know? And so, um, I mean, we even, we did and did tarot readings <clears throat> two Thursdays ago. And at first, you know, Dan was like texting me and he's like, oh, crap, you know, I don't know. There's nobody going back there or whatever. And then by six, six thirty, when the meat raffle was starting, I guess tarot also was doing well at the same time. <laughs> and it's like, what? Sure. Okay. Like, and so now we're booking it again because, you know, it's like, you don't know until you try. Yeah. So, yeah. But yes, to answer your question, definitely some trial and error. And I mean, you have to, I think as being a business owner, you have to kind of swallow your pride because there's going to be things that you may think will be great ideas and mm. they're not, or things that you're like, well, I guess we'll see and far exceed your expectations, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, I had to be convinced to start a podcast at one point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so I think you have to take a leap of faith on some things. And then if it doesn't work, you're not a failure. It's yeah. just, well, it didn't work, you know? So, yeah. Are there any, um, like a visionary plans for the, for anything going on down oh, there? Oh gosh. Yeah. I have lots of plans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, you know, with the back room, I think Dan, you know, just keeping it, keeping it, we're on a good track with it, but just keeping the momentum going, um, I think is the plan with, you know, the comedy. Um, we, during COVID and then kind of, um, with the fact that an entrance to our parking lot got blocked off, um, with some new routing with the new bank, we were able to add, um, some more patio and so that's been evolving more and more. And so I do have a lot of kind of hopes and kind of aspirations to make kind of more of a permanent outdoor venue situation mm -hmm. going on out there. But again, it's baby steps. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot of possibilities that can happen with the circle in. And so, um, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of fun things ahead. So. Yeah, it'd be awesome. To, it'd be awesome to see any kind of stage or mm -hmm. like some kind of covering. Yes. Um, that's that's what I hear from like a lot of I mean, people who even play like down at um down at uh the hub, mm -hmm. they're always like, Oh, I wish there was something to cover me. Mm -hmm. Well, they do have yeah. the uh tent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do the tent. I would prefer a more permanent mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's kind of you know, if you do like a five, ten year plan, I mean there's like a few Stages we've like, yeah, with finally making the patio a little more permanent and, you know, we've got some lighting going and all those things. Um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of potential there. So. Like, yeah, yeah. My, one of my most fun memories of the circle is actually when uh, the there was a tornado. And we all had to <laughs> yeah. pile into the basement. Yeah. Uh, and so me and was... my girlfriend were in the room with the wine. So I immediately started asking people if they wanted to trade yes. for wine yes. if we were stuck down yes. there. <laughs> so I'm glad that you brought up the basement because I was going to mention that. Um, I joke with Dan and I was like, mm, speak easy. He's like, okay, slower down. But I'm like, well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> there's some space down there, yeah, there is. that a lot. is just filled with a bunch of crap there were so, like 40 of us down there yeah it was yeah i know i got videos and i was like well i'm glad everyone's safe <laughs> <laughs> and there was a guy smoking a cigarette in the tent and the pole is like going like oh, this and we're like yeah. what are you doing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. we could just see on the security camera because i was yes. right next to it yes. and there's just this guy smoking oh. while this tent is barely well, okay, not falling so that's over the other thing that all of a sudden now and i don't know if it's the building's positions or what has happened, but it's kind of become a wind tunnel, like a mm. alley down Belgrade. And so we've had many situations where that tent is uh, on the verge. And so I just feel like in general, it might be better on many levels to have more of a permanent situation. Yeah, that would be so, awesome. Yeah. There <laughs> seems to be a lot of that going on in general in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. Like things have been 
the landscape has been changing yes. a little bit. Yes. I don't know how much it actually is, but is yeah. it, 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 it's starting to look more like a, a downtown than it did mm-hmm. like before it was a little bit scattered, but even yes. with just the bank and the, um, what is that? A skin clinic across yep. the way? There's no openings anymore. Yeah. yeah. It really mm-hmm. has more of a, a downtown feel to yes. it. Yeah. And you got neutral yeah. grounds right there too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and it's always like bar restaurant wise, Ben, where, you know, we all kind of share same customers because when they're down there, they're, you know, bebopping from place to place, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, we have people that, yeah, we'll have some drinks and then go over to Nikato, you know, for a bite to eat or yep. check out the music at any of the other, you know, establishments. And it's kind of its own. It's always been kind of referred to as where the adults go to play. You know, mm. there's downtown area where you can do the same thing but it's a much different scene yeah and i think lower north is definitely becoming more of where you can still have fun but you don't have to worry about yeah kind of all the the college bullshit oh, yeah, if you yeah this crew is rarely downtown <laughs> if we're not on gig ditto same i mean you know and i think especially just yeah living here you kind of grow out of that where you mm-hmm. don't want that you know and um yeah so kind of a fine line of like being able to talk, but still enjoy some live music and, yeah. you know, be seems able like to... there's really good relations up there too, because of the blues on Belgrade and mm-hmm. all that, those things where like all of you businesses are like yeah. working together on those yeah. types of things. Yeah. Seems and we like... need to, I mean, we all need each other. Yeah. I mean, if there was just one, it's not going to work the yep. same. So, um, but yeah. And also just having, you know, where, in the mornings, you know, you can run over and get a coffee at Neutral Grounds. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, go over, you know, and yeah, I mean, I think all of us bank at France and bank. So it's all very yeah. interconnected. Yeah, that's you know? Jake's coffee spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I've probably said this in the podcast five or six times before, but I, I do feel like something that we're always fighting against in Mankato a little bit is the kind of like liquor trough bar special thing mm-hmm. that. If you want to, if you want to start an establishment that has like a culture, like you're trying to like, uh, build, Mm -hmm. then you're always going to be measuring that against the fact that you can sell $5 shots to a thousand college students and just make that money. Mm -hmm. And it's a hard choice from a business Mm -hmm. owner's perspective because the culture that you build it could collapse with Mm -hmm. a, you know, a single Mm -hmm. wrong move. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's a really honorable thing to do, I think, because it, it builds a community. I mean, it, it bolsters the community. I shouldn't say it builds it. It's a place for them to gather. Right. And you know, a lot of those college students, they just move on and they're looking for like a a place and those, those places are good too. But I feel like that is why we don't have, um, we don't have like a a hundred to 300 person venue in Mankato. Mm -hmm. Is because when someone cases the place, mm-hmm. they're like, well, you can make, I mean, the profit margins razor thin on liquor. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can make it right there by, by right. selling Jaeger bombs or whatever. Right. Right. Um, and I think the wine cafe in the circle, Emily and I have talked about this many times, how there's a lot of similarities, mm. you know, um, just where it's like, yes, obviously, do we need to, you know, figure out sometimes how to pay our bills or what, what special can we do to get some people in? But when it comes down to it, we're wanting like people to really have an experience and to enjoy it and for them to come back Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, fair prices and, you know, like how she's dabbled too with different things that she can have on the menu without having like a full blown kitchen. And we don't have a kitchen and we've, you know, done some of these other things of how we can get people to stick around and maybe still get food in your establishment without being a full blown restaurant Mm -hmm. and so um and yeah that age range where you truly have i feel both of us you know 25 to 80 year olds are your regulars yeah yeah. you know and so it's a wide range of um people that you're kind of trying to um please Mm -hmm. if you will so. Yeah, I mean, those are the three the three bars I step foot in in this town mm-hmm. are Wine Cafe, Circle, and Nikato. Yep. And it's because I like the owners, mm-hmm. I like the culture, mm-hmm. and I feel taken care of when I'm there. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah, really. and that's awesome to hear. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, and I, I think it's true. Absolutely. Yeah. And the three of us all grew up in Mankato. Yeah, that, that's so, awesome. So, you know, um, Jake and Emily used to date. So it's just, really? Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool. Like, we, Jake's a little older than me. Emily's one year younger than me. We all truly grew up together. And yeah. so it's just been really fun. And we all kind of 
around the same time kind of, you know, were thrown into this bar ownership yeah. thing. Yeah. And so. all three of those owners are friends of the show, friends of the brand. So. Yeah. 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 Dude, when I worked downtown, when I first moved here, I was like bartending down at Red Rocks mm-hmm. and I was so regularly mistaken for either being Jake Downs <laughs> or being, they're like, I Until didn't. you said that right now, I would have never in a million years, <laughs> but, I see it. but now I see it. It has to be the demeanor. You guys yeah. both kind of have that calm collected. Yes. It happened. That is it funny. It was so eerie. Like people would come in and be like, oh, I didn't know you guys bought this place. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> uh, it's this again. It's funny. I would have never. Yeah, but you ever. know, that's so I, he's funny a now you great that. guy to yeah. be mistaken yeah. for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Mistaken, there's worse. <laughs> yeah. I'll just go with it. I'll be like, oh, yeah. that is funny. Now I won't be able to get that out of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <great>. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Oh, well, anyways, uh, that anecdote on the side. Um, you want to want to talk about some of your other business ventures? You have like a lot going oh, on. I stuff. always, yeah, I always hear another thing. So. I don't know. So I blame it on COVID. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> My plan was, I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that because a food truck had always been talked about. But um, yeah, so bought the bar in 2019. Obviously, we all know what happened in March of 2020, and so we got shut down. Um, and then with us not having um, a kitchen. We truly, luckily, I mean, they gave it to everyone at the time, but like we had our off sale license and we still currently do. Um, so we were able to sell, you know, off sale. We were putting together some bundles, you know, and everyone was thinking the world was going to end. So for about a month, you know, that was great. And okay, we got, you know, rid of a bunch of product and whatnot. And then when it was, you know, more and more prolonged that the bars were going to be closed, it was kind of a, okay, now we got to figure some stuff out. Um, cause the markup on off sale, I mean, that can't, unless you're like some, you know, well-established liquor store. I mean, I truly just don't know if you aren't aware, <laughs> I don't know how they make it. Mm. So, um, but yeah. And so I knew that wasn't gonna, you know, sustain us for much longer, but I got approached by, um, Katie who was working for Cisco. I just knew her. Um, I don't even know, just from like, being around here and she had asked if we would sell some frozen food items a bunch of you know food that now the restaurants weren't buying this is also when they were still shut down um and if I basically wanted to try to sell it like a Schwann's man and I was like yeah I mean (laughs) at this point I got nothing else going on so um Big Dog had also done this too um and there's a few other places in town um that had um tried it and So, you know, we had kind of like put it out there, like you had to call in and whatever, and that just wasn't working with our customers. And so I started posting on Facebook, um, because again, with kind of that niche of people that we have, Facebook is our biggest marketing tool and the thing that people see um, the most for us, at least. And so started posting on there, you know, um, you know, it's five pound bags of, you know, restaurant quality chicken tenders. Um, We were having, you had soups. Um, I'm trying to think of like what other things were at that time. It was a lot of like air fryer items. Cause I feel like in 2020, everyone was learning about their air fryer because yeah. they were home and cooking and the kids were home and, um, a lot of breakfast items we were selling a lot of. So it was really kind of, um, going towards kids at home, quick and easy meals, mm. um, things that you could possibly get at a restaurant, you know, cheese curds and, um, Reuben balls and that kind of stuff. Mm. And so, you know, we thought it was going to be just a small amount of time. And then it just grew and grew to the point that I was having to buy freezers and the circle was taken over by, we called them body freezers. Um, (laughs) It was insane. And like, that was the time that you couldn't get freezers either. So Mm. I was having them delivered from um, Lowe's and all this stuff. It was wild. But, um, And so, yeah, almost weekly, we were getting a hundred some cases of stuff and then it was getting picked up that next day. Um, and that kept us afloat. I mean, paid our bills wholeheartedly. And then when things started easing up and, you know, it was like, okay, you could have 25% capacity, 50% capacity. You guys have seen the circle. That was not going to work. I mean, Mm. it was just not. And love our customers to death, but half of them wouldn't have listened. You know, I mean, it just I was like, I'm not going to fight. And so then we waited until we were able to have people outside and like, it would have been that, um, 
spring of 2021 when it was like actually a really nice spring, like early. I think we were able to have people outside in like March mm. or whatever. Mm. Um, and then utilizing that space that we now had for an extended patio um, because of the uh, entrance to the circle, they had blocked it off because um, they only wanted people turning into the bank. And so um, we got all this extra space and we're able to have people out there. And so even when we could go to almost 100% capacity inside, we just did the outside until it really started getting colder. Um, and so at that point, then our back room was needed um, for the pool tables and for eventually, you know, comedy and whatnot. But um, so I kept saying that this, this whole Cisco thing was like a beast. Like it was just taking over my life. Like it was getting, well, it was taking over the circle. It was getting a bit nuts. And so the bar had to reopen. And then I was like, well, I guess, you know, that was just like a thing that we did to survive the pandemic and okay, move on. And then people were like, well, I want my chicken tender still, or I want my, (laughs) did you have a bucket of six Cisco pickles? I love those. Yes. Yeah. And just the craziest stuff people. Yeah. Well, can you get this? Can you get that? You know, whatever. And at the same time, chip steak had closed. Mm. So we had, and I, you know, I was like, why are people asking for, how do they know about these products? Like I, I was just so oblivious to some of it. And so, yeah, the combination of all of it. I mean, people were just like diehards about some stuff. And so it's like, all right, well, you're going to have to find another location for this. And so that's how the Beast Foods came about. And I know that it had to be, I was looking at locations, you know, downtown Mankato. I was looking, there was some spots in Upper North, but I was like, I know that it has to be ground level, you know, where people can carry out these, you know, yeah. large bags of food and um, whatnot. And so we found the spot across from PJ's Liquor, um, right next to Hunan Garden. And I mean, convenient for me, I live in Lower North, the Circle's in Lower North. And so, you know, it just made my life easier. Um, and yeah, and then it also added in, we used to do a bunch of vendor craft shows, um, too, kind of pre COVID and a little bit during COVID. And so started carrying a bunch of like, um, local vendor products, um, started with like some Moody Bees honey and some local soaps and whatnot. And then that has just grown. We're at over 150 local Minnesota made wow. um, items. That's cool. Um, and then, yeah, so that's kind of introduced this soda love boutique part of it because people were getting confused on, well, it's just food or they thought it was like we sold to restaurants or they were confused on what it was. And so the soda love part is just bringing in all these other, you know, Minnesota made products. So it's not just like your dipping sauces or honey or whatever. We also have, you know, some clothing we've got, um, we've got like men's, um, body washes and some, you know, mugs, we've got drink mixes. So it's a lot of different stuff. So, and then that's going to kind of become a website that we can kind of build on as well. Um, and then the beast is starting to do some catering as well. So, um, but from also those products, um, when we were able to have people outside, we were losing some customers and we kind of always had, um, lost customers to not having a restaurant because, Mm. you know, we only have the frozen pizzas. And so we weren't sure how long it was going to be that people could physically get inside the bar or what was going to happen. I mean, quite frankly, I think everyone was just like, the world's changed now. And, you know, um, and I had always wanted a food truck and I worked at Junkers prior to, um, the circle. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with Junkers. It was across the street from big dog, um, which is now Walgreens. Mm -hmm. And it was basically a lot of the same, like, um, big dog is. So it was like, um, it was a little like more like family quality, um, bar food. It was also like a bar sports teams would go there after Caswell. Um, and they would have like prime rib on the weekends and whatnot. So I worked there for five years and then they tore it down and sold to, um, Walgreens, but, um, they had these junker dunkers that they were famous for. So it's like a patty melt. And so Marta, one of the owners, um, she had done a food truck for a couple of years selling those junker dunkers, um, at some of the farmer's markets and whatnot, but she had a full-time job and it just was getting to be too much Mm -hmm. for her. And food, I mean, the food trucks can, it's kind of, it's a lot of work. Um, 
And so I had, I had mentioned to her like, Hey, if you're ever interested in selling it, she just had it like sitting out at her farm, you know, and she was kind of up in the air and if she would start it back up again or not. And, um, and so, yeah, finally that spring of 2021, um, we were talking and she's like, yeah, if you're still interested in it. So the Pelican came about, um, there's this Dickie Lyons. Um, he doesn't come in as often. He's going to be churning 87, 88. Um, but he's just a character and like, he's kind of a legend at the circle we call him. Um, but when we would have football potlucks, uh, he would get a plate and just eat and eat and never get full. And, um, he used to be on the fire department and this other firefighter used to call him the Pelican because he just like could eat and like never get full. And so he'd be like, Oh, here's the Pelican over here, you know, whatever. And so I was like, that'd be a really good name for a food truck. Yeah. <laughs> and so then we just started doing this, like nom nom on the side and I worked with him and her um graphic designers and they just came up with this these this overextended beak and just awesome funny little sayings and I wanted it to be lighthearted and fun and with the food truck I kept hearing and I mean they were growing in popularity but then also during the pandemic like it was you know they could function they were able to be out and people could you know um, be at them and there is no real restrictions. And so I was like, well, I think this might be a good idea to do. Um, but I kept hearing that all these food trucks are super, super good, but some of them you'd have to wait for a half hour, 45 minutes to get your food. And then there's your lunch break and you know, mm -hmm. whatnot, good food. But, and so I'm like, well, I have this Cisco stuff. A lot of it is already cooked that you're just heating through, you know, it's meant to be like at a restaurant, like whatnot. And so we had this, you know, seasoned pork, we had, um, you know, different items that would work really well on the flat top in there. And so we started just doing that. I was originally wanting to do, you know, where it was like fun little nods to Minnesota stuff. You know, we had looked into like a, um, a meatloaf, like melt or, you know, a, a tater tot hot dish inspired melt and that kind of stuff. But the more and more I kind of just started like listening to people and hearing that it needed to be quick turnover. Um, and so, yeah, we started doing like these mac and cheese Gouda bowls and um, kind of sandwich plates. And then uh, I'm trying to think, oh, our gourmet hot dogs with like a bunch of fun different toppings. Those have been um, very popular. And so we were able then to get booked through like, you know, Taylor Corp or these places that have two to 300 people because all of our food is ready to go the second we open the window and then you can feed, you know, mass quantities of people. So, cool. yeah, so that both of them came out through the pandemic. And I didn't mean to start a business every year, but that's kind of how it's gone. <laughs> so it's been a little nuts. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's been a little interesting, but I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, timeline wise and timing wise, I, I, I truly, I guess I haven't talked to the previous owners of the circle, but I know that they're, you know, prior to me buying the place, I mean, just increases of prices, you know, liabilities, all those things were starting to get more and more, you know, the older you get and the more you've been, you know, maybe a part of something like, you're just like, I can't keep, you know, these things. And so I don't know if they would have I think they would have thrown in the towel, you know, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. shut down and having to try to navigate all these um, different, you know, regulations and things. And and so I think that it really all kind of worked out, you know, how it should have. And I, these two other businesses probably wouldn't have happened for how they did um, if it wasn't for you know, that's the awesome. situation. So, well, it, sound, yeah. it sounds like in a way too, that, um, you know, in the example of the beast that might've saved the circle too. So oh, you're just like trying yeah. to be scrappy. Yes. Wind, wind up with another yeah. business and yeah. helping save the first one. So that's yeah. really cool. I mean, yeah, it's you. also a little bit there. Uh, lower North is such a big food desert. Mm -hmm. Like, I mm -hmm. mean, any amount of food that's available for sale there is, yes. I mean, I don't know how much mm -hmm the beast sees from that, but I'm sure you have to get something from people just like that. You have to go to high V or. Cub. Oh yes. Yeah. That's and cool. we started doing some grab and go like sandwiches and whatnot. And people just, yeah, they love that where it's like, we're their place to just grab a sandwich or, um, and then we've kind of been doing some like ready to go meals. So like 
you know, my family last night, we grabbed one. Of, we work with a local chef, Chef Renee, and had one of her beef stroganoff hot dishes that's, you know, ready to throw in the oven. And it was simple and easy before, you know, Ellie had volleyball. And so, yeah, I definitely think there has been a need and a niche for something like this, mm-hmm. you know. Some so, kind of food. Yeah, I'm excited then, yeah. to check it out. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been yeah. in there either, so I'm, yeah. we'll have to make a TF outing. I oh, how exciting. I wandered exciting. in there one time just yeah. randomly, and I was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah. I wish yeah. I had an air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe you should just start selling no. air fryers, too. I know. <laughs> Christmas is cool. <laughs> yeah, you know what to get them. I think my air fryer is like 40 bucks, and it yeah. works great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you can do it in the oven, too. It doesn't have to be an air fryer. Oven, For losers. <laughs> yeah. They make air fryer ovens now, too. So Yeah. Yeah. Panasonic has this one that air fries, defrosts, uh, uh, does convection and all that. Mm-hmm. And what's really cool about it is you can set them in tandem. So you could be like cook this oven mode for like 20 minutes and then air fry it right at oh. the end to crisp it up. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Technology. Yeah. I tell it- you what. They used to have really smart programmable microwaves in the 90s, and uh, now they've gotten progressively like dumber and cheaper because yeah. people don't want to mm-hmm. do that. And I feel like we're going to see that more now. We're going to have more smart appliances because they're on the internet. Yeah. You know, you mm-hmm. can just hook them up to the network and they'll be like, oh, well, this is the you know, recipe right. that you're making. I've scanned the QR code off your burrito right. and I can yeah, optimize yeah, yeah. its cook settings. <laughs> yeah. Well, I measure its internal temperature right. to make sure that it's just right. I'm yeah. ready for it. I want it. <laughs> well, is there uh, any other shout outs, uh, topics, anything else that you would like to talk about? Well, I mean, I think you guys do an awesome job of promoting everything. I oh, must thank say. You. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, wholeheartedly. And you guys have become very big supporters. Of all the things circle. Okay. So I appreciate that. And I definitely, yes, Dan has done some amazing things for the bar. My manager, Kat, has been incredible. We love Kat, too. Yeah. And so I just, I, I feel very blessed with the staff that I have across the board. Like, we have just been, I think everyone always asks, like, are you having issues, you know, with staffing? And through this entire process of me owning the bar, we have not and I just feel very, very, very fortunate for that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think our customers are just awesome. We've just been very lucky. So, and I love the kind of culture that we're developing down there. So, like, yeah, well, you'll definitely yeah. see more of us. And I hope, I hope to gig there more this uh, year. Um, is there any uh, socials uh, or other places you'd like people to go uh, just to check out what you got going on and see what's in the world of Jenny? Yeah, we've got, you know, Facebook. We're starting to get our <clears throat> um, Instagram up and going where I have to have somebody younger and smarter than <laughs> myself to do that. But What are um, the names on those? So we've got the Circle In Facebook page. Mm-hmm. We've got the Beast Foods. Mm-hmm. Um, and Soda Love Boutique is kind of... Um, becoming its own thing. And then that's going to have a website where we can kind of ship all over. Um, And then the Pelican, you can see where we're going to be. So that'll probably be starting back up in usually May, May through October ish. The food truck is out. So yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, heck yeah. Thanks for all you do for the community and yeah. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for coming on the show. Yes, (laughs) yes, absolutely. And we're clear. Perfect. Beautiful.